Today's video is on interpreting the results of the blowing snow control cost-benefit tool from the perspective of the transportation agency. Sponsors and partners for the blowing snow control tool are the Minnesota Department of Transportation and the University of Minnesota. This video is one of two videos on interpreting the results of the blowing snow control cost-benefit tool. The other video is on interpreting the results from the perspective of a landowner. The purpose of this video is to learn how to interpret the results of the blowing snow control tool from the perspective of the transportation agency. When conducting a cost-benefit analysis for a transportation project, the agency typically considers the costs and benefits both to the agency and society. Maintaining clear roads when blowing snow causes blow ice or drifting can be costly. Blowing snow control can help reduce these costs. Because the transportation agency is using taxes, it is important that they are good stewards of the taxpayer dollars and also consider the benefits to those taxpayers. Blowing snow control also saves motorists on travel time and can reduce snow and ice related crashes. However, there is a cost to installation of blowing snow control solutions and the cost of compensating the landowner. And not all blowing snow control solutions are created equal. That is to say that they have different levels of effectiveness as well as costs. Blowing snow can create both blow ice and drifting. Blow ice is when the blowing snow sticks to the road surface creating icy conditions. Drifting is when the blowing snow creates drifts on the roadway. During a blow ice event, the transportation agency must use equipment and personnel to keep the roadway safe. This includes using salt and sand to keep the roadway from icing up. During a drifting event, the transportation agency must also use equipment and personnel to keep the roadway safe. Blowing snow also increases travel time. A distinction is made between regular daily traffic and heavy commercial traffic due to the difference in the cost of time. Blowing snow can cause ice and snow and ice related accidents. Different categories of crashes are associated with different levels of economic damages. From the very lowest economic cost, where only property is damaged, to the highest cost, when there are severe injuries and even fatalities. Blowing snow control solutions are estimated to reduce snow and ice related crashes by about 8% on a straight stretch of road and 40% on a super elevated curve. Maintaining safe roads with plows and other equipment uses fossil fuels and so emits greenhouse gases. Blowing snow control solutions can reduce these emissions. In addition, living snow fences also remove or sequester greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and store them in branches, leaves, and roots. For more details on the cost to the landowner, please watch your video on using the cost-benefit tool from the landowner's perspective. The transportation agency has a number of costs that they must consider when determining whether or not to install a blowing snow control solution. First, they must either rent or purchase the land. Second, with the exception of standing corn rows, designing a blowing snow control solution requires engineering work. Third, the agency must also pay to install the blowing snow control solution. Finally, in the case of living snow fences, the agency must either pay the landowner to establish and maintain the living snow fence, or they must do the work themselves. If the transportation agency rents the land, they will need to pay an annual cash rental rate. This is typically adjusted for inflation. If the transportation agency purchases the land, the agency will have a permanent blowing snow control solution. The agency pays a large upfront payment to the landowner in exchange for an asset. So what is the annual cost of owning land? If the money is borrowed, the agency must pay interest. If the money is not borrowed, that money is taken away from other projects that can earn a return. The annual cost is the value of the land multiplied by the annual percentage rate of the loan or the return on investment of alternative transportation projects. With the exception of standing corn rows, designing and blowing snow control solution requires engineering work.
There is also the cost of installation, both materials and labor for living and structural snow fences. For living snow fences, the installation costs can be cost shared through federal conservation programs. There is no cost to installing standing corn rows, since the farmer already plants corn in their field. For grading, there is a cost to the earthwork. For living snow fences, the transportation agency must either pay the landowner for establishment and maintenance or do the work themselves. Blow and snow control solutions are not always 100% effective at reducing the problems related to blowing snow. In addition, blowing snow control solutions do not reduce problems associated with falling snow. A living snow fence is only 100% effective when they grow large enough to trap all of the blowing snow. This usually takes about four years. In the earlier years, living snow fences are still partially effective at reducing blowing snow. About 25% in the first year, 50% in the second, and 75% in the third. Fields that use standing corn rows to control blowing snow but rotate corn with other crops such as soybeans, blowing snow control only happens during the years in which corn is planted. There is no blowing snow control in a year in which soybeans are planted. Immediately after installation, structural snow fences are 100% effective at controlling both blow ice and drifting problems. Grading is 100% effective at reducing drifting, but is not effective at all for reducing blow ice. Before we move over to a live demonstration of the tool, I want to give a very simple example of the results of the tool. In this example, in this example, let's assume that we have benefits of $1.20 and costs of $1. The net present value or net benefits are the benefits minus the costs. In this example, the net benefits are the difference between $1.20 and $1, or 20 cents. The benefit cost ratio is the benefits divided by the costs, or 1.2 in this example. When this ratio is greater than 1, then the benefits are larger than the costs. The return on investment is the net benefits over the cost. In this example, it is 20%. Now that you have some background information on blowing snow and blowing snow control solution from the transportation agency's perspective, I will now show you where this information is collected in the tool and how to interpret the results. This example of cost-benefit analysis is available to anyone whenever they go to the tool. The tool allows the user to analyze the cost of land if the agency decides to rent the land, and if the agency decides to purchase the land. The tool collects information on equipment used for blow ice. This includes mileage, hours, and fuel use to determine costs. The tool also requires the number of blow ice events per year and the application rates for salt and sand. Similar to blow ice, the tool collects information on equipment used for drifting. For traffic, For traffic, the tool collects information on the average number of cars per day, how that is changing from year to year, and how much heavy commercial traffic there is. The tool also collects information on the amount of time it takes to regain bare pavement and how much that event slows down traffic. For crashes, the user can input the average number of blowing snow and ice-related crashes per year. Moving on over to the results, the first chart is a comparison of the costs and benefits for the different snow control solution. The costs and benefits presented here are the discounted net present value of the costs and benefits over the practice life, 15 years in this case. The costs are on the left and the benefits are on the right. 
Note that the standing corn rolls have no installation cost and grading has no landowner cost. Benefits are lower for living snow fences because it takes the snow control solution four years to grow. The benefits are also lower for standing corn rows because in this example, corn is being rotated with soybeans. Visually, the user can compare the size of the cost to the benefits. The tool also produces estimates of non-monetary benefits over the life of the blowing snow control solution, including reductions in personnel hours, uh, greenhouse gas savings, and reductions in salt usage. The next set of charts are the benefit cost ratio and the internal rate of return. For any project where the cost benefit ratio is greater than one, the benefits are greater than the cost. The chart on the right is the return on investment. Living snow fences and standing corn rows have the highest return on investment of about 14%. The final chart helps the transportation agency to determine the appropriate payment level in order to get a landowner to enroll in a blowing snow control program. Here we show an example for living snow fences. In year one, the landowner's break even is $685 per acre. The benefits directly to the agency are $2,627 per acre, and the benefits to society are $3,843 per acre. The transportation agency will save money as long as they pay the landowner less than the $2,627 per acre per year. At the bottom of the results, the user can find additional details on cost and benefits. So that ends our discussion of interpreting the results of the blowing snow control tool from the agency's perspective. For more information, you can go to snowcontroltools.umn.edu. Details are available in the user's guide, which you can find at the link along with answers to some frequently asked questions.